there is a fascinating story to be told by the banks of the Kishwaukee River. The Kishwaukee River Watershed The headwaters of the Kishwaukee River is a small wetland stream off Route 47, just north of the intersection of Route 14 in Woodstock. The Kishwaukee winds its way across northern Illinois to its mouth at the Rock River, south of Rockford. There is a wonderful balance between living and non-living things in healthy waters. This wonderful balance is called the ecosystem. An investigative trip to the river reveals life indigenous to the river and its backwaters. This is what we found. The sun is the original source of energy in an ecosystem. Plants convert the light energy into chemical energy, storing it in their cells. When primary consumers eat the producers, the energy changes into a form that can be stored in animal cells. Secondary consumers transform the energy once again. Decomposers may occupy several positions in the web both receiving energy from decaying plants and animals and supplying it to those feeding on them. The Kishwaukee watershed is one of the three highest quality river systems in Illinois. The main branch of the Kishwaukee is a Class A stream. The Illinois Department of Natural Resources sample fish populations at stream sites. Streams are then classified based upon the presence of pollution and silt intolerant species of fish. The Class A rating identifies a unique aquatic resource comparable to a stream without human disturbance. We know that bacteria are decomposers at the base of the food pyramid. It takes large numbers to support the higher order of animals, such as newts, tadpoles, and fish. They feed on dying material and break it down. Other decomposers that we discovered were aquatic worms, side swimmers, and crustaceans. These are sometimes called the garbage collectors of the food chain. An important part of the food pyramid are the producers. They make the food through power of the sun. Algae, duckweed, and cattails are examples of common producers. Snails help keep the algae under control. This is duckweed. Duckweed grows with two roots per leaf. The primary consumers are simple animals like Daphnia, mosquito larvae, and copepods. Copepods are food for secondary consumers. We are looking at Daphnia. Daphnia are water fleas that reproduce rapidly and are food for a large variety of fish and other secondary consumers. Sometimes we get to see eggs right inside a water flea. Right there are the eggs. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight eggs. This is a water scorpion. He is about two inches long. Water mites are red in color and swim very quickly. They eat water fleas and small plant life. Tubiflex worms extend up from the bottom of ponds and backwaters. They are so cool! We are getting a good look at mosquito larva that we collected from a puddle right outside our classroom. The fish like them too. The secondary consumers eat many of the small animals that consume vegetations or the producers. We found such things as frog, tadpoles, newts, fish, and even crayfish. My teacher and his friend went to the river to look for signs of life. It was early in March.
Temples are fun to watch and take care of. We can't put them in our ecosystem because the fish will eat them. The leopard frog has webbed feet, which makes him a great swimmer. He hibernates in the mud over winter. This one is in the cold water. The temperature needs to go up so it won't be so lethargic. If you listen carefully, you can hear many different kinds of frogs. My teacher went out at night looking for chorus frogs. He found one. This is female chorus frog. He's calling to a female. Here she comes now. He'll fertilize her eggs. These are chorus frog eggs. Can you see the babies inside? The Easter newt is fun to observe. My teacher and his friend found some hiding in the leaves in the river. He eats all kind of crustaceans and even worms. He swims by swishing his tail from side to side. He seems to enjoy swimming with the fish in our ecosystem. We are not yet sure why the bass in the northern don't try to eat him. Maybe he tastes bad. The female dragonfly lays eggs from its abdomen. The Johnny Darter is a shy fish. He likes to feed on small animals and fish eggs. The crayfish is fun to watch. Did you know it's related to the lobster? They usually burrow into the banks of streams or ponds and feed upon live or decaying animal or vegetable matter. This is a water strider. He glides on the top of the water with waxy feet. Whirligig beetles swim on the surface of the water. This shallow pond has tons of American toads. The female lays her eggs in a long string. This is our worm bed. They love to eat leftover fruit. I like to give worms to the fish. The bass will get it. <laughs> this is the largemouth bass. He is a secondary consumer in the food chain. He eats minnows, worms, daphnia, and mosquito larvae. This is a catfish. He is a scavenger. He likes to feed off the bottom of the river. See how he uses his whiskers to search for food among the pebbles? This is a northern. Our northern is so hungry, he likes to eat dead minnows. We're doing research on biodiversity. This is an isopod. We love doing research together. This is the giant water bug. Water scavenger beetle adults live in water or debris along lake shores. That's him. This is the bat swimmer. We like to journal our discoveries. Journaling our discoveries is fun. 
Oh, that is good. That is good. This was a fun trip to Elgin Community College. We learned even more about fish, turtles, toads, frogs, and water plant life. Today, Boone and McHenry counties are two of the fastest growing areas in northern Illinois. As more people move into the Kijwaki watersheds, the quality of water and its aquatic inhabitants will decline if measures are not taken to protect the Kijwaki River and its tributaries. What we do in the land in this watershed directly and indirectly affects Kijwaki streams. The animals, plants, Water, air, and soil depend on our care to remain healthy and productive. Let's work together to keep our watershed clean and natural.